Hello everyone and welcome to Unbound Learners Pre-K. Happy Monday! Did you do anything fun this weekend? That's so nice to hear! Are you ready to sing our good morning song together? Let's make our arms into a big circle out in front of us like this. Now let's stretch that circle up, up, up over our heads and let's give a little stretch from one side and stretch over to the other side. Bring that circle to the top and back down in front. And now it's time to sing together. If you know the words, sing along with me. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you all are having a wonderful day so far. Let's jump right into circle time with the calendar and weather chart. Now, the first thing that we do is begin with the date. And when we say the date, first we say the month. The month is right up here. Do you remember the new month that we started recently? March! That's right, friends. The month is March, and today is March 8th. So let's move the chip from the 5th. The last time that we met was March 5th. We'll go 6, 7, and today is March 8th. And right up here we have the year. Do you know what the year is? 2021. That's right, friends. You can also say 2021. 2021 or 2021 are both correct ways of saying the year. So let's say the date one more time all together. Are you ready? Today is March 8th, 2021. Can I see your counting fingers like this? And let's warm them up, give them a little stretch. We are going to count all the days that we've had so far in the month of March together. Are you ready? Let's start up here at the number one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have had eight days so far in the month of March. Now I need to see your fingers again, but this time we are going to sing the Days of the Week song. So how many fingers do you need to hold up for the Days of the Week song? Let's start with one hand. One hand has five fingers. But wait a minute. We need two more fingers to make seven because we have seven days in the week. If you know the words, sing along with me. Here we go. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now let's travel down, 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 right down here. Does anybody remember what the day was yesterday? I'll give you a clue and you can say it out loud with me. Yesterday was s s Sunday. That's right, friends. Yesterday was Sunday, the last day of the weekend. So that means that today is m m Monday. You're right. Today is Monday, the first day of the weekday. And if today is Monday, that means that tomorrow will be t t Tuesday. Tomorrow will be Tuesday. But let's go back to today and let's sing today is Monday together. It goes like this. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. Today is Monday, today is Monday, today is Monday, all day long. Now if we travel back up to the top, we have the season up here. Does anybody know what the season is? That's right, it's winter. And guess what, friends? Winter time is almost over. In a couple of weeks, we will say goodbye to the winter and we will say hello to a brand new season. Do you know what season will come after winter? 
Spring! That's right, friends. Soon it will be springtime. But for now, it's still winter. Let's travel back down here to the weather picture. That means that it's time to sing the weather song together. If you know the words, sing along with me. It goes like this. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? So friends, if you take a look at my weather board right down here, I'm very excited for the weather this week because this week it looks like the weather is going to be a little bit warmer and a little bit nicer. That means that spring must be on the way. So take a look at this picture down here. When I look out of the window at my house, I mostly see gray clouds in the sky, but the sun is trying to poke through the clouds a little bit. I say that it's mostly cloudy at my house. And look at my temperature chart. It's right between dark blue and light blue. Today at my house, the temperature is in the low 40s. So I say that it's pretty cool at my house. The temperature is cool. What's the weather like where you live, friends? Go ahead and look out your window and let me know what you see. Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Now let's move on to the letter and the number of the week. So this week we have a brand new letter to talk about. Take a look at this letter, friends. Do you know the sound that this letter makes? This letter says J, J, J. Can you make that sound with me? J, J, J. Now, do you know what letter this is? J, you're right. This is a lowercase J. And J says J. J, J. Now it's time to move on to the number and letter box today. I wonder what we'll find inside. So remember, inside of this box, I have something that starts with the letter J, J, J. And if you think you know what it is, you can take a guess. Are you ready for your first clue? Let's take a look. So inside of this box, I have something that is orange. This has hollowed out facial expressions and is usually seen around Halloween time. Do you know what it is? Let's take a look. It's a jack-o-lantern. A jack-o-lantern co comes from a pumpkin. And around Halloween time, you carve out facial expressions like this. So this jack-o-lantern has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And then you put a little candle inside of the hollowed out jack-o-lantern and it lights up like a lantern. Jack-o-lantern starts with the letter J, J, J. Now we also have a new number to talk about this week. Take a look at this double digit number. Do you know what number this is? 14, you're right. This is the number 14. Now 14 is a double digit number because when you write the number 14, you have to write two numbers. First you write this number. Can you show me what number this is with your finger? The number one. And after you write the number one, you write this number. Can you show me with your fingers what number this is? Four, that's right friends. So when you write the number 14, you write the numbers one, four, 14. Now we ran out of fingers to count, but instead we have tally marks. I'm going to draw 14 tally marks on the bottom of the chalkboard and we can count them together. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five goes across, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen tally marks. Now I wonder what we'll find inside of the number box to count today. Let's take a look. I have all of these sticks, and small thin sticks are called twigs. I have 14 of them to count, and I'm going to make them just like we made the tally marks. Will you count them with me? One, two, three, four, Five goes across, six, seven, eight, nine, ten goes across, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and one more makes fourteen. Fourteen twigs. Guess what, friends? I have a new addition to our circle times that I'd like to introduce you to. After we complete the letter and the number of the week, each day I'm going to teach you a new word to say in sign language. Now sign language is a language that uses hand gestures and facial expressions to communicate instead of saying words out loud. And this week I'm going to teach you how to say family in sign language. So watch very carefully. You're going to take both of your hands like this and you need your counting finger and your thumbs and join them together so that they form a circle like this. Now bring those two circles close to your chest and in an outward motion, you're going to go like this until your pinky fingers touch. Let's try that again. Watch my hands. Family. One more time. Family. Can you do that? family. This week we will focus on our habitats. Now some of you may be familiar with the word habitat because we spent a month learning about different animal habitats. Do you remember what the word habitat means? A habitat is a home or an environment and this week we'll explore your habitat. So where you live and what your environment and surroundings look like. So let's start off with the type of habitat that you live in. Maybe you live in an apartment building. Maybe you live in a condo. Maybe you live in an RV. Families live in all different types of habitats, just like animals. I have a poem that I'd like to share with you, and it goes like this. This is a nest for Mr. Bluebird. This is a hive for Mrs. B. This is a hole for Bunny Rabbit and this is a house for me. So I live in a house. Now my house is pretty small. The outside is covered in larch wood and the front door and the back door are both painted blue. Inside there is one big room that is the living room and the playroom on one side and the kitchen on the other side. I have one bathroom and I have three bedrooms inside of my home. What kind of habitat do you live in? Is your home similar to mine, or does it sound different? Why don't you show me? Let's go. For today's work, you are going to design a habitat. So right here, my son used his Legos to make a replication of our home. And I asked him to tell me about his design, and I'll tell you what he told me. So right here is the front door. And when you walk in the front door is the living room. He said that this is one of our couches and this is the other couch. And on the other side of the room is our kitchen. This is the kitchen table and here's a chair. And then the other side of the kitchen leads out to the back door. Right here is our main hallway. And this door leads to my younger son's room. When you continue down the hallway, you go into my older son's room. Across from my older son's room is my bedroom. And next to my bedroom 
is the bathroom. And when you continue back down the hallway, you're back into the living room and the kitchen. And this is my son's replica of our home. Some other possibilities that you can use to design your habitat would be some markers or crayons and paper, and you can draw your habitat. You can also use Picasso tiles or magnet tiles, which are great materials for building. You can use Play-Doh, or you can use loose material. So any organic material that you find around your house, any bits and parts that you can use to build. There are all different ways to replicate your habitat. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. I would really love to see your work in all the ways that you recreate your habitats. So if you would like to share your work with me, have your grown up take a picture and send it to me. I would love to see your recreations. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up, and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support this channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. Before we go, we have one last song to sing. Can you wave goodbye like this? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.